Yo, what's good, everybody? I want to welcome everybody to the No Level Cap Podcast. We're back with another another episode. We're on episode 21. I'd like to introduce everybody to the crew. We've got the Black Daredevil and the best actor in Austin, Texas, Terrence Flowers. What's going on, Terrence? What it do? Hey, I'm ready to jump into this topic. Today is going to be a spicy one. Hopefully get the conversation going. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. And let's get to it. Indeed, indeed. We got Will, the collector of collectors. What's popping, Will? This is what's popping right now. Hey, 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 let's go. Yeah. And oh, you finna have some fun. You finna have some fun these yeah, next couple months. I mean, I heard Lock <laughs> Live is actually really okay. short. It's like 20, yeah. 25 hours, something like that. So that's yeah. a nice that makes sense. Size adventure for you to get through. But I also oh, heard, yeah. I mean, like Xenoblade, I finished one. That shit took forever. And I'm on to that shit. I know it's going to take forever, even though I'm like a third of the way through the game. Like the way those games work. They're just now opening up. So, I mean, like, it doesn't really matter. I, I know I got another 50 hours ahead of me. So, and I mean, yeah. like, if you got three, and I, I I believe you said you had two and one, right? Yeah, I got two digitally, and I got one down here in the box. Boy, you be playing them for the rest of the year. Mm. Uh, I know. <laughs> and lastly, we've got the living cartoon and the man with the golden voice, Rakeem Beck. What's popping, Rakeem? Hey, man, it's all good, man. Having a great day. Play some games, watch some anime, even cry during One Piece. It's gonna be a live one tonight. <laughs> one Piece was good this week. <laughs> it was. It was. It was damn good. I was in tears. Shout shout outs to Tim. <laughs> yeah, shout, shout out to all boys Tim. Uh, and I am Sage Ashford, the man who won't shut up. I just want to remind y'all that No Level Cap goes live every Monday. If you prefer the video version, we're on YouTube. And if you're a fan of the audio version, we're on Spotify as well. We put up bite-sized versions of our podcast on TikTok. And this week, I wanted to get into something particularly interesting. Like, I, I like we keep a list of, of ideas, and there was one idea in particular that just kind of jumped out at me. I'm like, man, I, I really want to get into this. And, okay, so, like, part of being a gamer, like a long-time gamer, is seeing the franchises you love vanish. You can try to fight it, but unless you're one of the most boring motherfuckers in the world – eventually you're going to fall in love with a series. And for whatever reason, that series is not going to do very well. There's nothing to be done about it. You just got to hold that L and try to find something new. Hopefully you find something new. If you don't, uh, you shit out of luck, really. In this modern era, often you're stuck between picking from one of a handful of fr franchises within your favorite genre because everything else just tries to be experimental and can get canceled at a moment's notice, just like that. So, like... I know I've got multiple franchises that have been canceled, and I'm like, I, I want these franchises back so bad. And I wanted mm -hmm. to talk with y'all because I know all of y'all got at least one or two, maybe even three franchises or more that you want that you like, man, I, I sure miss that franchise and that, that motherfucker. I know it's gone. Uh, so I'm going to start with Will. Will, right. tell, me something. tell me about a franchise. Tell me about a franchise that uh, you miss that you would love to see come back, you would love to see get a revival? You know what? I don't even consider this game... I don't even consider it a franchise, but I feel like it could be one if they just go ahead and do it because I feel like they kind of all within arm's reach of each other. And that, my friends, is Project Cross Zone. Mm. I love it. It's a beautiful strategy RPG, and it features characters from Capcom, Sega, Namco, uh, Monolith Soft, because that started in the second game, really. Mm. And... They're just all there. And I'm just like, give me that. Give me that again. They only made two games on the 3DS so far. Was that technically before they became Bandai Namco? They were still Namco at that time, right? That's right. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, that's the reason why Xenosaga yeah. characters were in there. Yeah, okay. Yep, and to give us a short little brief history lesson, we did have a crossover of that capacity before Sega and the other companies got added to the game with Namco X Capcom on the PS2. Mm. And it was a strategy RPG as well. And there is a way to play that. There is an English translation out there. Don't tell nobody I sent you. And uh, there's also Project Cross Zone 1 and 2 and 3. Yes, but I want a 3 because they got more characters out in the way right now. And why not see these characters interact with each other? Why not see all the crazy little references? I want that back. I want a third game. Put it on the Switch. You 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 got money sitting right here. You go Put it get on it the on Switch. cell phone if you get it. I don't want it. <laughs> You you just put this shit out. Go ahead and give me Project Cross Zone Three. I want some of these characters from Xenoblade Chronicles in there. Give me Shulk. Give me all of them. Mm. I need it. Bring it back, please. To your point, Will. This is the era of like multiverse and crossovers like crazy. 
this will actually be the perfect time for that series to come back. I agree. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I I also agree like that. I mean, like that that's a game that I feel like wouldn't be very expensive to make. I mean, like relatively speaking, like that shit not gonna cost no. Uh, it wouldn't cost no Tekken Eight. Like Tekken Eight is gonna oh, cost yeah. guap. So like uh, for Bandai Namco to come out, like the biggest problem you figure would be like getting to work with other like franchise, other developers, and getting them to put their their characters in your games. And then also, of course, like working out the digital rights, because of course those are a thing. It used to be yeah. where like you put a game out physically and they just be like, hey man, it's it's out. And uh, once that shit sell out of copies, we ain't gotta worry about it no more. And that mm -hmm. was basically how they used to handle licenses. But I think it's a little more complex now since you have digital games. But I'm sure mm -hmm. they could work something like that out. Uh, yeah. Terrence, what you got for me? Like what franchise? Give me your first franchise that you like, hey man, I want this back. All right, I I I, I tried to dig out the games that I own that um that uh I, I so I could have visual representation of which games I want to come back. And oh, this is yay. this is the, the, the first one. Yeah, o Oni Musha. It's like it's time. Capcom, it's time right. time yeah. to bring it back. It's like really, I I feel like it's only a matter of time before Capcom brings back Oni Musha, just because. It really doesn't make sense. Like now is the time to bring it back. We've had stuff like Ghost of Tsushima that's done so well. Sekiro. It's like samurai games are on the come up again. And it's like there's no reason to not bring back something like Oni Mushes. Like people have been begging for it. The last game came out like over 10 or so years ago. Like technically, I mean, we could count them doing what they do. Like a, it wasn't a remake. It was like a, they re-released... Um, like an Onimusha collection or something like that, or like Onimusha 1. They, they did something to it. Re-released the first one. Yeah, one. and that's pretty much all mm -hmm. that they did. But outside of that, the series has been just dormant. And like I said, now that Capcom has pretty much gotten their shit together again and they're slowly starting to revisit like some of their older properties, I think it's only a matter of time before we get a new Onimusha. It's just I don't think that time is really anytime soon just because it just seems like there's so much that they have on their plate at the moment. We, if it happens this generation, it'll be late this generation, or maybe it'll just be the next generation. But yeah, it's it, it's time for Onimusha to come back. Like the this game, Dawn of Dreams, I really liked it. It was really enjoyable. I didn't really play the original trilogy, but I know people really like those games. And just Onimusha overall is just one of those uh, series that people just really like from Capcom. Capcom is just one of those companies that they have a lot of iconic ips and there's no reason for them to not use them so i think it's only a matter of time before capcom revisits it again but when that happens i don't know but i do think it's time for onimusha to come back need to get a copy of that my my understanding well i mean like not even my understanding it it leaked right it was in the the uh the what was it called the nvidia the, leak? Uh, uh no 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 not the nvidia leak the capcom ransomware leak oh that was oh, that like it, it, they talked about how they were gonna work on a new Onimusha game, and that it should already be in the works. Now the thing about that is, of course, it can be canceled at any moment. Yeah. So it might, it might have been canceled. Like they might have started it in early in pre-production. They were like, eh, you know what? Don't nobody want no. Yeah, it could have turned it into be something else. Yeah, because I have a feeling that's kind of what happened with Exo Primal. Is that that started as maybe like a Dino Crisis reboot, and then oh, it just kind of no. turned into something else. You know, because I mean that's happened oh, plenty of times with Capcom. I mean oh. that's how. You got Devil May Cry, and there's another Capcom uh, series that pretty much Resident Evil 4 is known as the game that created, like, multiple mm. <laughs> of Capcom's <laughs> legendary IPs. But, yeah, that could very well be the case, is that maybe they're working on something and it just transformed into something else. So, who knows? Yeah. I, uh, I, that Hopefully, that's not what happened. Hopefully, we do hopefully. get an Onimusha, because I feel yeah. like that's a really important IP for Capcom. Like mm -hmm. definitely during the PS2 era, people really love that, that franchise. And like, there's no reason to try and create something new when you could just like put Cause like when everybody saw Exo Primal, everybody just called it not Dino Crisis. Cause yeah. that's what they wanted. And so like yeah. with Onimusha, like if you try to do like a knockoff Onimusha, everybody would go, why didn't you just make Onimusha? So like, hopefully that's what winds up happening. And hopefully it, I'm like, if that was cause like they gave dates for it. Uh, for all those games, and it was like quarter to like it. It's weird, like with fiscal dates and shit like that, because they always talk in fiscal quarters rather than in like actual release quarters. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I'm not sure when that was directly supposed to come out, but I think it was within the next couple of years. And I could see it being like an end of generation type thing. I, I don't see it being a next gen thing unless it just got canceled and they started over from scratch. Yeah. Uh, 
Rakeem, what's up, man? What, tell me your, your first uh, franchise. You like, hey, man, it's got to come back. Well, the first uh, game I wanted to come back, it didn't even really become a franchise. There was only one game. And this is way back on PS1. And it's a personal favorite of mine, The Legend of Dragoon. Mm. And the reason... <laughs> I should have known. I should have yeah. known. I've been talking about this game my whole life. He's been the talking reason... about this game as long as I've known him. And I've known Man. him like over a decade now. <laughs> I've got so many stories about just this one game, which is crazy with different people. First of all, if you don't know what Legend of Dragoon is, because a lot of p- listeners would never know what it is. It's so niche at this point. Um, it's basically like a Super Sentai version of a JRPG. Has a lot of anime elements to it. Um, big transformation vibes. And your characters turn to dragons. So what's not to like? Um, so I was a big fan of this game. It had a very unique battle system. with had a combo kind of base system where you had timing to the attacks. Magic where you use items. You press the button real fast to make the magic uh, bigger. Then, of course, you had a transformation system where you transformed into like a magical dragon knight and freaking scores for these cool magic attacks it was awesome and I, I really enjoyed that 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 game as a child and I, and i was never and you guys know this um that i've never been a gamer who completes at least when i was younger didn't complete a lot of games i just kind of played games and got to a point like and i forgot about it i've beaten Legend of dragoon, dragoon probably three times three four times i freaking Damn. love that game um and it's not just the fact that um, that, you know, it was just a good game and I liked the Power Ranger aspect of it too and all that. It was that it connected with me on a personal level because people in my community, my local church, a lot of the kids had the game at the same time. We used to talk about it all the time. I remember when I was like 10 or 11 years old, maybe a little older than like 12, 13. Um, and I went to church one day and all the guys, we got in the corner and just talked about Electric Dragoon for like 50 minutes. And yeah, like legitimate. We talked about way back then what a sequel would look like. Even as kids, we, we, we fantasized the sequel, what we wanted out of, out of the sequel. And I had a friend of mine uh, way back when I was a kid. His name was Doughboy. We used to hang out all the time. We were real little, like five, <laughs> six years old. He'd come up my house every single day. He'd knock on the door, hey, when Rock and have company? And Doughboy would come on every single day. Then he disappeared. I didn't see him for like four, five, six years. He came back. He's almost a grown man, 16, 17 years old. His, his voice deep. And I kid you not, we in PS2 era now. This man came to my house. He, I didn't see him. He said, hey, man, where that game with them dudes transformed? That was fire. Where that game at? That man wanted to play that Dragoon then. He never owned it. He only played it in my house, but it left such an impression on him. Even as a child, he never forgot it six years later. That's how important that franchise was to like the little group of community I had as a kid. So I want to see that return, especially like now. It may not get a sequel, but it, it could get a remake. I think it's a, it's a series that could be a target for Sony. Like, hey, this could be something we could remake and bring back and, you know, at least, you know, redo the graphics, bring it back, up, upgrade, do, add some more voice acting to it and stuff like that. I think that's plausible. Kind of getting like a, a, a Secret of Mana kind of style remake? Yes, yes, yes. I think that's plausible. I would like to see that happen. And, uh, yeah, just in general, I would love to see that, that series come back. Well, series, that game come back. I capacity. wanna say Legend of Dragoon was like marketed as like a Final Fantasy killer. Yeah, that yes, I, yeah, it was. it was pretty much marketed as like Final Fantasy VII. It was. And yeah, yeah. And it was like it was. one of the most expensive games that Sony ever created at the time. And obviously, since there are no sequels, it didn't perform great. But there is like a big fan base for it that love that franchise. And so, like, yeah, I mean, I never got a chance to play it. But I think both of my childhood friends, like two of, well, two of my childhood friends uh, played it for sure. Um, and they both loved it. Uh, one of mm-hmm. them, he, he loaned it to me like once, but I just never got around to playing it. I was like busy playing like other RPGs. I just wound up giving it back to him. Uh, I always wanted to go back to it, but I mean, I didn't want to like, I, I hate being that guy that holds somebody's stuff for so long. You forget it's, it's not mm-hmm. actually yours. Yeah, so I, just gave it back I get you. I feel you on that. I <laughs> like how everybody was like, yeah, I know that guy. Oh, like, they get it. <laughs> so I just gave it back to him. I let it ha- let him have it. And I like meant to go back and kind of always hoped. I was like, well, maybe one day they'll make a sequel. And now that just happens to be one of many PS1 JRPGs that just kind of never got a sequel that you always was like, I wonder what a sequel to this would look like. And you just never got it. So uh, I don't see them doing like a full blown ff7 remake type remake no oh, no but nah like, uh uh-uh, no that would be too much money yeah, that that exactly. that'd be that if they did that i'd be like sony you okay <laughs> that's what i'm saying bro <laughs> yeah, like, money to blow. that's, that's, that's one hell of a financial risk right there <laughs> 
It really is. No. <laughs> Sony not built like that. Like nah. Sony, one of the people like you think about all the franchises that have been like that were basically really good ideas, but they didn't mm-hmm. perform to what Sony uh, felt like they should perform. And they all got shelved and you've never heard from them again. Legend of Dragoon is just one like uh, uh uh, PlayStation All Star. I was Royale. literally just thinking yeah. of that. I was like, that shit, I, I would see PlayStation All Stars come back before Legend of Dragoon comes back. Like that's just oh, unfortunately, yeah, you, you know, and that shit not coming back. Yeah, it ain't. <laughs> like, there's a whole niche of platform fighters now, and that shit, they PlayStation won't even talk. Pretend like they might do All Star Battle Royale too. That so time like, came and went. You, you know what? For them. And then, like, the sad thing is when they did it, like, there was no other, like, the platform fighting genre wasn't exactly popping back then. It's popping mm-hmm. now. Like, you got Nick. You got the Nick game. You've got uh, Multiverses. You've got yep. Smash Bros. still out there. Brawlhalla. Brawlhalla. Brawlhalla and all these other Live platform the fighters. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You got plenty of them. And, like, now would be the perfect time to bring that franchise back. But Sony, I don't know what it is about Sony. It's like once they fail, once they, like, hey. Don't even worry about it. Because, like, <laughs> I'll tell you another franchise that happened with uh, The Order 1886. Oh, yeah. You, 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 mean a- the, you mean the expensive tech demo? That's pretty much Thank what you. it was. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Like, I remember playing it and beating it in a weekend, which is probably one of the fastest times I ever beat a video game. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah. it was mostly just, like, cinematics and, like, linear, uh, you know, shooting type triple. I mean, third person shooter type shit. And it had like a really interesting world that I would have liked to see them build on and and make better combat, really. But like, I would have yeah. loved to have seen that like a more open world type version of that. They looked, they took one look at them sales, said, "Don't even worry about it." And you've never heard about that franchise again. So that's mm-hmm. just that's Sony. Like Sony just built like that. Like once they fail, once they like, we're not gonna do that no more. Like we'll you'll never see that shit again. You ain't gotta mm-hmm. worry about it. We, you'll never see it again from us. Um, so. I guess my first game, uh, y'all, some of y'all might have played it. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure Rakeem played this game. Uh, I'm not sure if Terrence or, or Will has. Uh, <clears throat> a man who's never had a pork bun is never a whole man. Goddamn sleeping dogs! My oh, God, that's oh. one of my favorite franchises. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, that game was godlike. I had never played like an open world, like crime or like city type game before. I played yeah. that, like, one time. Like, I saw my homeboy play it. Like, he bought it on sale, and I was looking at him play it, and I was like, wait a minute. This is like a, 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 a martial arts movie? This shit cold as fuck. And I saw, like, the story <laughs> unfolding, and I was like, because I hadn't played. I had really kind of fallen off gaming during that time, like, around, like, 2012. I had fallen off gaming. I only My only connection to it was through y'all and through, like, our, our college video game club. But I really wasn't playing video games heavy like that. And then I saw Sleeping Dogs, and I was like, I'm going to need this. I'm, I'm going to need this. <laughs> and so I came back full force. I was like, yeah, I'm all in on this. And I played the dog shit out of that game. Like, I beat yep. every race. I, I went out on every date. I had I went, I went two-timed the chick, and she cheated on me. And she was like, what's good for the goose? What's good for the game? It's good for the goose. And, and told me to fuck off and all that shit. That game was fire, bro. Like, I'm so. Who are so, you? I'm Wait, shit, mother- who are you? you? Man, that, <laughs> God, that game was so cold, bro. The story, the characters, like I loved all the characters. Like they were so like, it was just such a fully formed experience. It felt like watching a blockbuster, like action martial arts movie. The only thing I hated was like the tail tail end of it when they like mm. spoiler alert. Uh, just go ahead and skip ahead by like a minute and a half if you've never played Sleeping Dogs. Man, they like stabbed Wei Shin in the like they like drilled into his kneecaps. Like they tortured the shit out of him. They found it because it was like a story of a dude about like uh, some undercover cop type shit. And eventually they realized he was an undercover cop. And so like they tortured the shit out of him, which involved like taking a power drill to his kneecaps. Mm. At which point you think, okay, well, that's it for him. Like, even if somebody rescued him, he out of the story. Psych bitch, you thought he broke free beat the ass of everybody in the building and just walked on out. I'm like, what the walked. fuck? Like, do you mean hobbled or do you mean actually walked? <laughs> he hobbled for like, you ever seen like a ca- a video game character be hobbled until the next cutscene? Oh, uh, like oh, that. Oh yeah. Uh, he uh, was hurt for like 10 yeah. seconds, got out the chair, hobbled along. Then the cutscene happened and he was like, well, I'm back normal now. I'm he, like, he got some elixir. He's like, <laughs> oh, man. you know, you know what, you know what, you know what I will say, man? Why? 
No, I because it was just a tip, man. It's just a tip. Just got a tip of the drill. That was it. <laughs> man, fuck out of here, bro. That part of the game, like I try to pretend like that shit never happened. But overall, I like I love that game so much. I bought it three times. Like I bought it for PlayStation 3. I bought the uh definitive edition for PS4. And I wound up buying it a third time on Steam because it was like five bucks. And I was like, yeah, yeah. fuck yeah, I fucking I love this game. And I'd love to see a sequel to that game. Like I don't know what the fuck Square Square was thinking. They tried to make some kind of like online spinoff triad wars. I'm like, bro, the thing people loved about this game was the characters and the story. And you make it a game that's about none of that. Like, what were you thinking? And they canceled that bitch before it even got out of like beta. Of course they did. Like, who the fuck wanted that? Like, you can't make a game and then make a sequel to that game that has none of the elements that people wanted. Just wait and see with Skull and Bones. Now, mm. uh, next game up. <clears throat> uh Rick, uh, Will, what's up, man? Like, what's what's the second game on your list, man? All right, the second game on my list is a personal favorite of mine because I grew up with it, and even though it got two games, I kind of need that to come back officially. I'm going to need that man on Twitter to start ranting in English and just get back in the studio for me. I need to see Jet Set Radio back oh, in full Oh, yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. I need that. Right? I need that so bad. Because I love the aesthetic of that game. I love the feel of that game. I just and also kids, no graffiti. Please don't put your spray cans down, put your rollerblades down. Don't do it. It's gonna tell you that at the beginning too. Please don't get arrested. <laughs> These cops ain't playing out here in 2022. I would love to see y'all come home. But Jet Set Radio. Good talk. Jet Set Radio Future. Amazing soundtracks. Crazy cell shaded graphics. I wouldn't even mind so much as a remake. Please bring this game back to us. I need something from my time. And I ain't even that old. Give me my stuff. Please. I still got my Dreamcast right here. And I have a copy of it in my closet right now. For the Dreamcast. I even got it on my PS3 and on PC. Because I love it just that much. Please give me Jet Set Radio back. Do you count um, that spiritual successor that's coming out? Do you kind of count that as it coming Uh, back in a sense? Cyberpunk? Yeah. Does that count or does that not um, count? I'm willing to give it some credit, not all. And we is it out? That. I don't think That's it's a out good yet. Question. Is it even out? I don't think it's out yeah. yet. Okay. Well, it ain't. Well, guess what? It ain't counting. They wasting my time. Put it out, <laughs> then I'll see if it's up to snuff. <laughs> Well, I guess that's it might what be I, great. yeah. I guess that's what I mean. It's like when you get like a spiritual successor, do you kind of yeah. count that as the franchise kind of coming back in a sense, or do you just want like the OG thing coming back? <laughs> I think it's because I want the OG thing coming back. It's because I got attached to the crew. I got attached to the GGs and Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future. I was I'm attached to, to guys like Beat and all that. So, That's you know. fair. I, I, I got I'm you. A, That's fair. I'm going to have to answer that question myself when I get to, I think, the third one on my list. But uh, we I already know we're going with that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's it's only a select few games that will qualify that y'all know I would be interested in. Mm, but yeah, unless cool. somebody gets to it first. Speaking yeah. of, uh, Rakeem, what's up? What's What's game number two? All right, so game number two. So, you know me, I like fighting games, so I got to put a fighting game on the list. If you pay attention to my list right now, you know, you're going to notice a trend. I really like transformations. Um, I want Bloody Roar back. You got me. You got me. Man. <laughs> I, I had that on my oh, list, too. So really? I, I'll, I'll put this up oh, for you. <laughs> man. My boy got pregnant. There <laughs> is, there was nothing like it. Like, the feeling of just transforming into like a beast in the middle of a fighting game and just like destroying your opponent. Think of beauty. I remember playing it with my cousins as, as a child. My cousin brought the game over. I saw the main character turn into a wolf man. I was sold. Then my local freaking arcade got it. And I was in that mo- quarters, 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 <laughs> quarters. Mom, I need some money. You five, give me five. I need five. I got good grades. You're five dollars. Quarters, tokens, <laughs> let's go. I really, really liked it. And one of the most disappointing moments in my entire life actually happened because of Bloody Roar. I went to the store on my PS1 because my cousin had it. And I wanted to buy me a copy. My mother took me to the store. My parents, you know, back then, if your parent was with you, they could buy whatever the hell you wanted. As long as they bought it for you, it still technically was with parental advisory. Uh-oh. Right? I went to the store. Snitch. I was so excited. I was ready. I was, oh man, I can't wait to go home and play this. I already see it coming. That store owner was like, this game too violent for that child. I knew it. <laughs> oh, I played. knew it. <laughs> Bro, it's just the job. Don't worry about what the kids are playing. 
the salt in my in my veins. The game's like rated T. Like, like I look, I wasn't even a teenager then. I was like, oh. ooh, eleven. What? Close enough. Come on. Close enough. Man, that that looked at that man with more disdain and anger than I've ever looked at a man in my life. I'll never forget his face. You better never catch me on the street. <laughs> it's on sight. It's on sight. It's on sight. I hated that. And 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 I don't know why. I never I never even got a chance to go back and buy another another game. I could have got another copy of Bloody Roar. But that moment really messed with me as a kid. And it really bothered me because I really loved that first game, Bloody Roar One. So like that franchise went pretty far. Uh pretty much to the GameCube era, right? Xbox GameCube era. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Bloody Roar yes. 4, I guess, technically was the last one. Bloody Roar, Primal yeah. Fury. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. There, there were a lot of like untold, like unsung 3D games back then, like that and Battle Ring Toshinden. They lasted a oh, long time. Yeah. They had way a lot of copies and they kind of like slept on fighting games for the most part, you know. Well, yeah, you know, y'all talk uh, as much. Y'all fighting game guys, y'all all decided that the fighting game genre died until Street Fighter 4 came back. So y'all 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 played y'all part in burying all them 3D games. Hey, hey look, hey, I ain't gonna lie to you, you right. You right. Yeah. I mean what well, just that like <laughs> well after the PS2 era, it's like they just stopped making a lot of them at the same time. So there was a gap, you know, just a gap. Yeah, but I mean Tekken and, and Soul Calibur and them was still around, like I mean that's what we played. <laughs> That's why they're still here today. <laughs> now, King, you gotta also, remember. Also, they never, they never stopped Please making play. anything. Like <laughs> that's the reason why we're talking about this. Nobody ever stops making a franchise. What happens mm -hmm. is that franchise stops. Well, Metal Gear Solid, but yeah. every other franchise, like they don't stop making them. They they just didn't sell well enough, and then the the, the developers like, hey man, we can't afford to keep making this. Yeah, yeah. or you lose the development team, which. Like uh, the Urban Rain guys. Like, yeah, and like, Hudson Soft got yeah, absorbed. So it's like and Hudson Soft is gone. So, you know, Ain't no there goes Bloody Roar. Is really sitting at. It's, it's Ko Konami the has it. Oh, Konami has it? Yeah, so that, that means. Konami yeah, has it? Yeah, Konami has Because Hudson Soft got absorbed into Konami. So, yeah, that means. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought anyway, you, I I thought you do. <laughs> <laughs> I still want it. Uh, it's been a long time since I played Bloody Roar, man. So I, I didn't look it up recently. Yeah. Um, But. I still would like to see something from this franchise, even if it's a reboot, which it likely would be at this point. Some type of reboot of the of the franchise to some degree, even if it's just like a small test to see if people still like it, like a smaller game. I just want to see that style of game come back, that 3D arena, um, like transformation style game. I really yeah. like that. If yeah. it got I'm, something, I'm in my opinion, if it came back in the same way that uh, Killer Instinct uh, 2013 yeah. did, that oh, would yeah. be perfect. Like some kind of like just low key kind of like X uh, like a XB. I mean, I know Xbox Live Arcade doesn't exist anymore, but something along those lines, and it came back like that. That would fit it perfectly, in my opinion. Oh isn't yeah, that, isn't definitely. The new thing ID at Xbox, I, like their I, tiny I don't know. division. Or I whatever. think that is. I think it yeah. is ID at Xbox or the indie thing. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, but also, before we move forward, yes, Terrence, speak speaking as a collector, did you have a manual in that case? Probably not. <laughs> I, I think I, I think this is just like a yeah. There's no manual in there. <laughs> okay, well, either way, keep your hands on that. That game is worth anywhere between forty to fifty dollars. If you had a manual, you'd be getting about seventy to sixty for it. So well, that's good to know. Keep hands on. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I thought PS2 was when they stopped making manuals, low key. No, nah, you'd be surprised. Out. It, it, it's funny. It's funny because if like you, it. it's funny because if you look in like the corner, like the GameStop sticker, it has like five ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know, no, I know. Nobody can see. Oh yeah, nobody can see. It. It's not gonna show yeah. up on camera. But yeah, it's just kind of funny when you look at those old price stickers back then, and you know when Man. they were practically just giving away those games, then just trying to get rid of inventory. That's supply and demand for you right there. Yes, so, it is. uh. I guess in in the in the vein of like games that have vanished, but there are spiritual successors. Uh, Suikoden. Mm, Suikoden yeah. is one of my favorite mm, uh, video game great. franchises of all time. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's the first video game I ever beat. Like I remember, like so much of that game stuck with me. Just the idea of being a a, a this this prince, or well, not prince, but like a a, a high ranking military official's son, right? 
And then all of a sudden, like, you're considered a traitor to the nation. You got to go on the run. And there's so much random shit that happens in that game. Uh, you, your best friend turns out to be like an immortal with the power of like this soul eating magic on his hand. Uh, he has to sacrifice his life to defeat somebody uh, or to defeat this giant monster. He passes his soul eating rune to you. Uh, at some point, you fight a fucking vampire. There's no reason to fight a vampire. You just fight one. Uh, you fight, you like travel into like the forest, meet like some elves and shit. Mm -hmm. Not some elves, but like uh, kobolds, I believe. You, believe. you meet like some kobolds, I believe. It's like all types of fantasy shit going on. Some of it don't even make sense. Like the first Suikoden game barely makes sense as far as like how its world is designed. But what made it work is that everything was set within the same universe. It was like a better version of Trails before Trails. Like, because mm. Trails has a habit of falling into all these weird anime uh, trope type things. And Suikoden, mm -hmm. it, it's, there's still some tropey elements to it, but it's not as blatant. It's not, they're not as common tropes. And it's just a better written franchise. But it, they're, they're both, they both take place within the same world. And they don't do that bullshit where it's like, oh, this game takes place in like, you know, uh, 1100 AD. This game takes place in 1600 AD, so all the characters you know are dead and gone. And like, they don't do all of that. All those games take place within like the same 40, 50 year time span, probably even less, really. Uh, Suikoden in one and Suikoden in two. I have that game somewhere. I love Suikoden <laughs> Tactics. Uh, I played actually all the Suikoden games except three and four. Uh, I played some of three on my PS3. Four, I heard was ass, so I just never got around yeah, to it. Yeah, I heard. Sweeken in one and five are my favorites. Uh, I know that's a controversial five. opinion because Sweeken in two is supposedly like um, <laughs> the ghost. Yeah, the ghost. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's the considered goat. the really good one. Because <laughs> I remember yeah. for years, like what was it like? Two was the one that was hard to find, but you could always find copies of three. Mm. Two was yep. impossible. Mm -hmm. but like low key, like I remember, and this is now my turn to do like the childhood thing. Uh, I asked my <laughs> mom to buy Sweeken in two. For years and she tried like to the extent that like uh right before i got sweet in one and two on uh ps3 in like college like i was mm -hmm. like i played that game i played sweet in one in 1998 dating myself uh and i played sweet in one and two in college in 2015 and it was to the extent that i i asked my mom i said mom do you remember sweet in two trying to buy she was like hell yeah i remember i tried and failed at many places they all used to tell me it was sold out and like you know finally sony was like there it is right there like you can get it for i think i paid like 10 bucks for it because otherwise mm -hmm. you was gonna go on ebay and come off like a hundred dollars plus mm -hmm. or something like that and i played both of them and like i know people really uh put sweet in two on like a pedestal and all of that i they do Sweet in one to me is still like the better game. Like Sweet in two, it's there's so many esoteric things you have to do to get the good ending. Sweet in one is like, hey man, just oh. just get all 108 people and you good, bro. Like we finna give you the good ending. So it was a little ridiculous. I would love to see that franchise come back, uh, maybe in like a Trials of Mana style type game, like you know, like where the graphics are modern, but not like so modern that it's like. Look, we broke the bank on this shit. I don't need all of that. I just need it to look like a game that would be made that could only run on a PS4. You know? Uh, yeah. What's up? What's up? What's I was up, about to game? say, man, we've highlighted Trials of Mana's art style so much. Like, I'm just going to play Trials of Mana soon. So, just to, it's like, that just must be just a pleasant looking <laughs> game. I mean, yeah, I played a demo for that. It was great. I remember playing demo. Yeah. Like, Is it Secret of Mana or Trials of Mana? I always. It's Trials. It's Trials. trials. Oh, okay. okay. The third one. Secret yeah, is a Secret different game. Trials. Oh, okay. okay. Secret is different. I couldn't remember which one got like remade or whatever. <laughs> trials was they the remade one. They all of them. They the remade in some. Well, they remastered most of them. Trials is the one that is like how I would prefer to see a lot of older games get a comeback yeah. because it, mm -hmm. it very clearly looks like a game of today, but it's not like, yeah, we spent. All of it on this motherfucker. Like, it's not one of those type games. Like, it, you can tell. Like, there's a difference between... Like, if you look at Trials of Mana and Final Fantasy VII Remake, you like, oh, yeah, the budgets mm -hmm. are completely different worlds for this. Mm -hmm. And, like, I would love to see a lot of, like, lesser-known franchises come back with, like, a Trials of Mana level budget and just get that mm -hmm. look to... Not necessarily that identical look, but just, like, but... that level of graphical, like, fidelity. Because I, yeah. I just, like, I'm like, okay, I'll take this. Uh... But yeah, like that's a, a great franchise. And I know uh we're getting uh A Uden Chronicle uh next year, I believe. And like the first game was uh they, they did like a spin-off game 
that yeah. came out this year and it was pretty well received. And I'm hoping that next year, the next one, like the actual game is like mm-hmm. a goat level game on the level of like an Octopath Traveler, which is kind of the style that they were going for a little bit. Yep. Uh, almost like some HD 2D shit. I'm hoping that that's what we get. Like, uh, that is the best thing. But like, I know Terrence asked earlier, like, how much do you care about the spiritual successor? In this instance, quite a lot because the creator is working on the the spiritual successor, like the, right. the guy that made Suikoden, in uh, the first three Suikoden in games, uh, Murayama, uh, is working on them. Uh, I still would like to see like a team put together to work on a Suikoden game for, from Konami, but I mean, it's Konami, so you know it's how Konami. trash they can be. So, uh, Pachinko, <laughs> man, you have a lot. Terrence, what's, up, man? what's, what's the what's the next game up? Well, I was trying to decide on uh, which one to to pick, but uh. I'll go with this one. Maybe the other one I'll do in like a lightning round kind of thing. You know, nowadays it feels like we don't really like the back in like the, the, the PS1, PS2 era. It feels like we always had like the arcadey uh, car mm-hmm. games. Like you have like the games that were just like not everything wasn't realistic and everything wasn't trying to be. Well, no, I take that back. Everything was trying to be Mario Kart around that time. But, you know, it felt <laughs> like there were games that were just trying to have fun and they weren't trying to be like simulators outside of like your Gran Turismo and stuff like that Uh, anyway I feel like those games could coexist you can have like your simulators you can have you can have your Project Gotham racing you can have your Gran Turismo and you can all you can have your Need for Speed and you can also have Burnout like we we I I feel like this this series needs to come back and I know why it's been dormant Burnout fire I, I know why it's been dormant just because I mean Criterion they got them working on other stuff now. I checked on their uh, Wikipedia. It's like they pretty much are just working on Star Wars stuff now. <laughs> and like Need oh, for man. Speed, I guess whenever a new Need for Speed comes out, they work on it as well. But I miss the the days of the the arcade racing game, man. Those yeah. those were just just fun. Like games that they weren't realistic. It was just all about like intense speed. Like Burnout was about for those who don't know Burnout. Burnout is a game where pretty much the point is to just like crash it's like crash as much like have the most ridiculous crash as possible and you get points from it and yep. the last game that they really came out with i know i think there was like a um like a, a mobile paradise. game or something like that but technically yeah the last one they had was paradise which that one it was kind of and it wasn't as well received and i think that's ultimately why they kind of shut down the franchise just because it didn't seem like they had any real good ideas for it and also it's sister franchise need for speed it seems like that hasn't really been on the up and up either. So I think it's one of those cases where if you can't get Need for Speed up to snuff, then you're not really going to get Burnout up to snuff either. So I can understand why it's gone, but I just miss that era. Like those car race, the, the, the arcade racing games were just fun. And pretty much the only kind of game you have like that now is pretty much like Mario Kart. I mean, there's other stuff, I guess, you could technically count like Rocket League in a way, sort of. Not the same. You don't care. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's not the same, but not I could see same. people trying to like link the two. <laughs> I get it. Um, yeah. I mean, to be honest, those are all different genres of well, yeah. subgenres, right? So yeah. like you have the the over realistic, almost pretentious to me kind of sim games like Gran Turismo, uh, Forza, Street Forza. Yeah. yeah. Then yeah. you have like the arcade games, like what you're talking about. You have the kart racers like Mario Kart. And, mm-hmm. of course, you have the car combat like Destruction All-Stars or Twisted Metal. Twisted so. yeah. Metal. Yeah, it just seems like that whole era just kind of just disappeared. Like your Midnight Club, your Project Gotham, mm-hmm. like Burnout. It's like those games are just gone. And I, I can't really pinpoint why that's the case other than maybe they just weren't doing that well. But neither, I mean, regardless, I just would love to see Burnout come back. Like I'd love to see it with um, PS. What you got, Will? When you said Midnight Club, bruh, there are so many days where I have had people come into the store <laughs> asking for Midnight Club. And I'm just like, I'm Nobody. just like, every time, they, every time they do it, I just be like, I hate to break it to you, bro. It's, it's been gone. over a decade. Gone, Hang it up. It ain't coming back, man. It's gone. Rock, rock, rock it stars it going, on to big, to going on to better things. <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's a wrap, bro. Same folks that made Grand Theft Auto made this. If y'all stopped buying five, maybe we would have seen a new Midnight Club by now. <laughs> so... But here we are. This is what y'all wanted. So yeah. can't help you. Yeah, it's just wild that that whole era of uh, racing games has disappeared. But if it came back, I, I would just, I, I would love it. Like, I, I love Burnout Revenge. It was my favorite Burnout game, one of my favorite games on the PS2. And I would just yes. love to see 
those type of racing games come back? Uh, if you want us, like, if you're wondering why that those where those games went, it's a mix of things. One, I don't really know what the Burnout franchise sold. That wasn't one of my favorite franchises, but I'm, I'm pretty like, sure I'm Revenge was like the best selling one, but Paradise it, it was, was like, eh, you know, it was middling. So yeah. like, uh, me and Keem talk about this quote a lot, and we've been talking about it for like a decade. <laughs> uh, it's it's from uh, Stephanie Sterling. Developers uh, don't want well, publishers don't want some of the money. They want all of the money. It's never enough for them to make. Made. I Very promise cool. it is. Like <laughs> when they said that, I was like, "Whoa, shit, y'all speaking truth." Like that that's just so accurate to like not just how publishers act or, uh, operate, but really how corporations in general operate. They just they, it's never enough for them to make some profit. To just be like, "Yeah, that game sold pretty well. We just going, you know, keep it going cuz it's selling pretty." No, 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 no. We got to make all the money possible. We got to milk the consumer dry for every fucking dime they got. We got to see how much DLC and bullshit we can put in it. Mm -hmm. And if it's not the most generic shit possible to sell to the widest audience possible, fuck it. You know, toss it to the side and try to find something else or focus on the one thing that we have that is genericized enough to get like a lot of sales. And we just going to roll right. with that. Yeah. So like it's, that it's also EA. So, you know, EA, I mean... They're going to find a way to get as much money as they can. And I think they didn't get what they were looking for with Burnout Paradise. So they were like, well, that's a wrap on that. So We didn't get in your pocket enough for it. I mean, you see what EA did. They, they, they've they canceled games because they like, is this going to make like Madden level money or FIFA level money? And it's like, <laughs> shit, hell no. Most things ain't. That's why Madden is Madden and FIFA is FIFA. Like, what did you think was going to happen? So like. If they can cancel games for dumbass reasons like that, it's like I, I expect certain games to just vanish, and it sucks, which is why we're doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll do the third, and then after we do our thirds, we'll just do like a really quick lightning round, just like any like leftover franchises you have. Um, so I'm actually kind of torn on this one because there are two – like I got three left, and of the three, one of them kind of like – this definitely belongs in a lightning round, and also it came back not too long ago. I just want it to be a full series. Uh, but then there's up two other ones, and one is, like, probably my favorite game of all time, but it'll never come back. And then the other one's, like, one of my favorite games of all time, and it might come back. So I guess we'll go with the, the uh, like, we'll just do, since this whole podcast is based on games that you know not coming back. Uh, one game that, like, I've never felt as special, like, I've never felt as entranced by a game is just like captured by a game as i did playing lunar silver star story mm. like i don't yeah. i cannot describe to you the feelings i got playing that game and it just all hit me at once like i remember playing like one section of the game and i was in some jrpg ass city and i was just sitting there and i was like man i just love everything about this game the combat system the characters are likable they were tropey but not so tropey that you like hey man i've seen this a billion times before also I, I was like 12 so that helped but like everything about that game from the presentation to the combat to the characters was just perfect and i like i know studio alex is is basically kind of done they did two games and really that was it they did silver star story or actually silver star and they did Eternal Blue, and they've just been remaking those games ever since. Yeah, I know yeah. there's a DS game. We're not going to talk about it. We're going to pretend like it's Highlander 2. <laughs> it don't exist. That's, that's Devin's favorite game right there. <laughs> Shout out to Devin. Boy, I Shout out to Devin, man. That one. You Shout out to Devin, bro. <laughs> See, no man, evil. Hear no evil, speak no evil. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I just, I adored that game. Like, And I would love to see a game. And, and this is, again, I'm going to say probably... It definitely wouldn't sell well enough to like make a high tier game, but like anything like of the level of like a Falcom RPG would be enough for me if they had like the same art style and like that. And that's really important. I don't want no updated type shit where, it, where we see like some Moe blob faces and none of that bullshit. I don't want no 2010, 2020 type art style. I want some straight up night. Kind of like how when you look at Gundam and they do like Universal Century, it feel like you've been transported back to like 1980, but like in mm. modern HD graphics mm. or modern HD animation, like that. That's what I want. I don't want to see no none of that new shit that they do with the art style. Fuck that. All right. Like let's I know people be like, oh well, that's that's nerds for you. They stuck in the past. In this case, you're damn right. I'm stuck in the past. Like I wouldn't bother with that shit. Gotta get back to back to the it. past. <laughs> Samurai Jack, back to the past. 
what's what's going on, King? I was saying, like, does it kind of remind you of kind of how what Dragon Quest does, where like the art style is like fixed and they kind of just iterate on it and kind of give it its own style? Because Dragon Quest really hasn't changed the art direction; it just kind of glossed it up a little bit. Okay, so here, I guess that's more of like a Toriyama thing, though, right? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Kind of, yeah, but like the thing, like. The difference between Lunar and Dragon Quest is like I hadn't played a there hasn't been a new Lunar again Highlander two and that other one, um mm. there hasn't been a new Lunar since like 1996 or something, and so I I, I kind of want that nostalgia feel in the same way that people liked Mega Man nine when it was like an eight bit type game, but like Dragon Quest they've been making them whole since like 1987 with regularity. It's on Dragon Quest eleven. If Dragon Quest twelve looked like Dragon Quest eleven, I'm gonna tell you right now I'm not playing that motherfucker. Like that's it's it's too many games that look exactly the same. Like if my if Lunar came back and was around for like ten years and looked the same for ten years, I would bitch then. Like it's one thing to come back and like, oh yeah, you know, we just want to remind you of what it was like back then. But after a while, like, all right, I've I've had that, I've had my moment, I've had my nostalgia. Now it's time to move forward. So now, nah, like with Dragon Quest, I'm like, hey man, it, it's time to it's time to get into it. Like it's time like. They 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 kind of teasing Dragon Quest might be a little darker, might be a little bit more serious, might be more for adults. And I'm like, I don't want it too adult. I don't want motherfuckers getting stabbed and bleeding out everywhere, nothing like that. But I would sure, like. Yeah, that's another Dragon Quest game. <laughs> I mean, Dragon Quest is never really a lighthearted series. I'm gonna be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. But like, I still would want like a more serious presentation than mm. what we got in Dragon Quest Eleven. Just just a little bit. Let's look, show me that you've evolved a little bit. Like, if it looked a little right. more somewhere between Dragon Quest and Dragon's Dogma, if it looked somewhere in between mm -hmm. that, like, whatever, if you could find like a half step, that would be cool. But, like, with Lunar, no, nah, I, I want like a full nostalgia trip if it was to come back. <laughs> like, and you ain't got, like, obviously, you wouldn't have to spend a lot of money on that. Like, just again, that same kind of budget level I was talking about before, that Trials of Mana, like, that tier. That that between that and like Falcom, Trails of Cold Steel, somewhere in there. And I, I would just adore that game. I don't care if it's turn based. I don't care if it's action. Uh turn based turn based system for Lunar was good, but it wasn't oh, yeah. like so revolutionary that I like, ah, oh, if it's not turn based, I don't want like nah. No, nah. and then also that's very much a beggars can't be choosers type of deal. Like, goddamn, mm -hmm. like if I got it back and it looked kind of like how I want it to look, like everything else, I'm just gonna shut the fuck up about. Um <clears throat> Rakeem, what's up? What's what's your third, bro? All right. So for my third, um, everybody's podcast is not gonna be surprised by it because I've mentioned it numerous times already. Sage is tired of me talking about it, but I'm gonna talk about oh, it until it come out. I, I it want Splinter Cell. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what the game the... I thought you was gonna <laughs> say. Sam Fisher, you where you at? About. Where is Sam Fisher? Where are you? Splinter Cell. Yes. Nigga, I heard you talk about Splinter Cell until like a couple of years ago. Shadow Hearts. Where's Shadow Hearts oh, on your list? That was gonna, I was going to put it in, in the last one. <laughs> yes. All the times this man talked about Shadow Hearts and all of a sudden now it's, I want Sam Fisher. See, you don't I care do. about no Sam Fisher. Stop it. I do. I do. I, mean, I want Shadow Hearts as well, but I mean, that's that's what the lightning round was for. Right. That was my last one. Leave on the bank. <laughs> eat him a mess surprise up. Not that. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Anyway, right, go, man, go for it. Uh, so, uh, I brought up Sam Fisher specifically because, like, this is this is different. I wanted to go a different angle with this one because I went super nostalgic with the other two. I didn't get into Splinter Cell until the was it twenty twelve, twenty thirteen when Blacklist came out. Um, Ooh. I was not a stealth guy like that, but the presentation of Splinter Cell in that game made me fall in love with that universe. Like the feeling of being a spy. The, the just the physicality of it. There's a very much realism to it, but it, the aspect of the game it just feels different from anything else. Because it's like you know you could you go through and mow through these guys, but it's not gonna always help you. You have to be like smarter, more tactical. You have to think about what you're gonna do. And of course, they gave you more elements in that game. You could be more actiony, but it, that doesn't really. In some cases, it doesn't matter what you do. You still gotta be stealthy. Um, I really really like Blacklist. Blacklist made me feel like man. This Sam Fisher, like, uh, what's what I'm looking for? This the 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 spy, the secret agent kind of fantasy. I never was into Metal Gear. I didn't play a lot of Metal Gear games, so this was my exposure to that later in life. 
I wanted more of that going forward. And then Ubisoft kind of just shelved the franchise for over almost a decade. It's been a decade now, excuse me, for a decade now. And so, like, dang, I was, like, looking forward, like, hey, man, what's the next level of Splinter Cell? You know, because they're not really putting them on the modern console, so it's kind of hard to go back and play them. I can play them now, like, on PC, which I will at some point, but I got a lot, a lot of games in my, my backlog. Um, so I would like to see that franchise come back. Just, like, something else, too, is, like, that's, I feel like Splinter Cell is one of those franchises you really could have easily translated to stuff like movies and television shows and things like that because it was more grounded and realistic. I just feel like they've wasted that IP that could have been expanded in so many different areas and been like a big multimedia hit for them. Where and we're in the area now, era now where gaming is becoming more multimedia. We just had an Uncharted movie. We're getting television shows and Netflix specials by Resident Evil. There's more gaming media across an anime, television, movies, and things like that. I think Splinter Cell coming back for them at Ubisoft, really capitalizing on it, could be a big hit for them. And I'd like to see that come back. Uh, I I agree with everything you just said. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm still caught off guard that this man said Splinter Cell as many times <laughs> I've heard him talk about Shadow Hearts. You don't relegate Shadow Hearts to the lightning round. Ain't that about a bit? All right. Yeah, no, right. right. Uh, the thing I wanted to say, though, is like Ubisoft is really in a weird spot right now, like uh, creative wise. Like, I don't know what the like. I took a shot at them earlier with Skull and Bones and it was intentional. Like, I didn't. You know, just thinking that off the off the fly, I was like, man, that uh, Skull and Bones, it, it looks like a mistake. Like what people wanted was like an expansion of uh, Black Flag. And for whatever reason, they like, no, you are the ship in this game. Like, who the fuck asked for that? <laughs> people wanted to be a pirate. <laughs> people wanted to form their own pirate game. You done stuck them in, you done made them into a ship. Nah, don't nobody want that shit. And like, there's, that's, that's the case with a lot of Ubisoft games. Don't nobody want that shit. And I say that as somebody who, at least three of my favorite games from the last generation were Ubisoft games. Watch Dogs 2, pretty good. Uh, between Watch Dogs 2 and 1 together, both pretty good. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, two of my favorite video games of all time, really. And I don't know what happened between 2018 and now where they just completely lost their way. Everything they make, like, yeah, exactly. They, they've all got, they've gone downhill. They, they're canceling games left and right. I heard they just canceled the, uh, the Ghost Recon Battle Royale or whatever it was. Uh, they, they had to push back their, their new Assassin's Creed game. Uh, they, and that's not even the, the big one that everybody think is thinking about. Yeah, like they gotta save all their money for uh, Beyond Good and Evil too. <laughs> yeah, <bro>. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm a lot of y'all. Beyond Good and Evil Two is not the game that Beyond Good and Evil One fans wanted, but it is the game that I want because it looks amazing. Like I love the the black character they, that they show with with that big ass fro. I thought she looked cool as hell. I like the the talking monkey. I like that that vibe that they. You don't get a lot of space games where you get that that outlaw vibe where you just get to explore space as like an outlaw on like some Farscape type shit. You don't really get that a lot. And I thought that looked really cool. And yeah, it does suck that that game basically they showed it in 2017. And at first they actually showed it a lot because like every six months they would show, do their own little live stream and talk about it. And then that motherfucker would vanish. It would be like, yo, what happened to this game? And it'd just be like, I mean, you know, it, it was gone. It's been gone since like 2019. And they haven't said anything about it. I heard they were doing playtesting for it. So it might be, you know, a year or two off now. Mm. Uh, but still, that's just another sign of, like, how many franchises. And then, of course, they had to clean house, firing all these, well, firing some of the motherfuckers that was causing all that, those those disgusting work conditions and shit like that. Oh, yeah. So it's just a mess of a company right now. And, like, that kind of leans into why Splinter Cell, like, you haven't seen a new, a new Splinter Cell. Like, Assassin's Creed, all they had to do was just take what happened in Odyssey and origins and copy paste it just to new settings, uh, new mythology and that type shit. Nah, they gotta come out with Assassin's Creed Infinity or whatever the fuck it is. And it's a lot of like games as a service type shit. Then nobody asked for that. I ain't ask you for that. Just make a big ass RPG where I get to assassinate motherfuckers. That's all you had to do. Like those <laughs> games, like regardless of how many times people complain about them, like, oh, I missed the old Assassin's Creed. Well, motherfucker, if you missed it, you should have bought it. Because the, the new ones are selling. Origins sold like crazy. Odyssey sold more than Origins. So I don't understand why you wouldn't just keep making those the thing that people wanted. Instead, they had to, like, fuck it up. And it's, like, the same with Splinter Cell. Like, people have been begging you for another Splinter Cell for almost a decade, just like Keem said. And it's still, like, nowhere to be found. And I don't get it. Uh, <clears throat> Terrence, what's up? What's, what's number three, bro? All right, well, this one I, I don't have a copy for, so I can't, you know, show it off. <laughs> but 
the one the the franchise that I want to come back is a childhood favorite of mine. We've we've listed all our favorite uh, our, our childhood RPGs at this point, and I think yeah. it's time for me to reveal mine. Nintendo, uh, come on, bring back Golden Sun. Now, ooh. I know why they're Bars. not going to bring it back. I, I, I know why they're not going to bring it back. It's like Dark Dawn when it came out on a, I think that was the DS. It didn't do that well. Like it. It was kind of the, the reviews on it were mixed, and I think the sales weren't that great. So, looking at that, and that was like 2010, man, it's been so long. Um, looking at that, I could see why they probably don't want to revisit the franchise. And Camelot, the the developers of the Golden Sun series, I think now they're pretty much working on like the Mario tennis games, like the other, like the the spin. No, 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 not even tennis, like Mario Golf, I think, like golf and tennis. They're, they're working on like the side Mario games. Which I, I think I won't say is a waste of their talent, just because I mean people like those games, you know. So I can't. Like, it's I one can't, of those things where it's like it's gonna sell better, but it's not yeah. as creatively interesting. Yeah, so right. I can understand. Yeah, so I mean I can't be mad at the fact they're working on the games that are actually gonna sell better and that have an audience. But at the same time, the child in me who grew like Golden Sun for me that was the game that truly got me into RPGs. Like I, I remember, well, outside of Pokemon Red, when I got Golden Sun one. Played that on the Game Boy, well, Game Boy Advance, and yep. I just fell in love. The soundtrack was spectacular. I still, to this day, every now and then, listen to the Venus Lighthouse theme. Man, amazing. Uh, the Gen, like the battle system. That game, that series has still some of the best summons like in RPG history, God. in my opinion. They just were so cool for their time. And uh, the Man. sequel of The Lost Age, it was really good. What's up, Sage? I oh, just, so. just for a brief, brief <laughs> second, what happened to summons? Outside of Final Fantasy, just in they general, all fucking, mm. yeah, like they all Hello. remember every final every RPG used to have summons, and then out of nowhere they was all Final like, Cross. Yep. we give up. I, I feel like back then, uh, during like that era, um, summons were popular just because at that time, like that cinematic experience, we weren't used to it. But now it's like every game is cinematic in some way, so like mm. the experience of watching a summon isn't as mind blowing. And, and let's be mm. honest, a lot of people now are like. I don't want to watch the game. I want to actually play it. So I think that may be the reason why summons aren't mm, like the answer. selling point that they used to be. But yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's I, ironic because Final Fantasy 16 is literally marketed as <laughs> all summons. <laughs> all summons. <laughs> well, like summon. It looks like you get summon. like summon battles. Summon. So I mean, hey, summon. maybe it'll be the game to bring it back. Like Square, <laughs> Square is the only RPG company at this point that I could see like really making summons a strong thing again. So, you know, yeah. we'll see. But the way here's how I think Golden Sun could come back. I don't think they should make a new game. I think they should remake the first one. Like remake it in the style of I hate to say it again, Trials of Mana or something along the lines of um uh well, What if it looked like uh Octopath? That's kind of what I was I, I was trying to think of like yeah. how would that look? Is she tutor? You know, well, that, like the Dragon Quest three remake. That wouldn't it be bad. Like, I, I think yeah, that like that could Dragon work. Quest like, yeah, I think it could work along those lines. It could work either way for me. Um, yeah, clean up the sprite work, uh, whether they're like three D models or whether they're like sprites <laughs> or whatever. Like, I'd be fine with that. Like, the summons I think will look gorgeous in the Octopath style. Or well, they would also look good in the Trials of Mana way too. So, I think that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that that's the way that it should come back is that they should remake it. And I literally just thought of that as I um as you asked me, I was like, what if they remade Golden Sun instead of like trying to do a sequel? I think that would be the way to get people interested in again yeah. is um oh yeah to redo the first game because the first game it still tells a great story. Summers are still great. Characters are still great. There's some things that they could change, you know, for modern modern times. But I think that that's a series that's worth revisiting and also like outside of like your fire emblem um i can't even count like mario rpg anymore i guess uh because that friend about, uh, uh the, the mario and luigi uh, paper mario I well yeah yeah paper mario yeah yeah yeah, well, yeah paper too. mario still lives mm -hmm. yeah so like outside of like paper mario uh fire emblem nintendo doesn't really have like a flagship rpg series and i think that it's just a waste to... oh okay Zeno, okay 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 oh, oh, oh. wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> Okay. Don't, don't have the Blade fans on our ass, bro. Uh, oh, okay, 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 you know, fine, 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 fine. You got to draw the ire of some crazy people. Please fine, stop. fine, fine, fine. I, I don't have a Switch, so I, I forgot about Xenoblade just because when I think Xenoblade, I think I'm still kind of thinking like um, Xenogears, like Xenogear, Xenosaga, Xenosaga kind of like mm -hmm. that era. So That's it's like fair. I hadn't yeah, yeah, like yeah. thought about that. But yeah, you are right. It's like that is their RPG now. But I guess 
outside of that. They could use another, <laughs> they, they could use another uh, RPG uh, series, and I think it'd be great if Golden Sun could come back. But uh, I mean, look, well, look, uh, well, the fact you all mentioned Xenoblade is like, look how well that's done for them. I think that's proof that they could use another franchise like that um, in their wheelhouse. I think that that would be great for Nintendo. So bring it back. I, I just I, I would love to see it. I think that it would do I, I think it would do Nintendo well to bring back on the sun to do like a remake of that. If you know, at least give it a try. If it doesn't work well, you know what? Hey, it can go back into the dirt where it came. So, you know, hey. What's what's going on, Key? Oh, I'd rank up, man. I'm glad you brought up Golden Sun, man. That's got to be like the the game I played the most on emulator mm-hmm. because I just love the feeling of it. And I remember my dad would always race my emulator every few weeks because he just didn't like me playing games, download <laughs> games on the, on the computer. He just did, and I just kept downloading, and I put it right back on there. I started from the beginning. I did not care. I loved Golden Sun. <laughs> Good choice. I love to see their franchise come back. Great yeah. choice. Yeah, I mean yeah. the Switch is Great also choice. like the prime. Uh, system for this because I know like uh, Japan yeah. they really like playing RPGs on the Switch so it's like why not bring back a series like Golden Sun I think that that's just perfect for the era that we're in you know for the handheld you could do you know if you want to play on the TV stick it in the dock if you want to play on the go you just go so I don't see a reason why to not give it a chance in some kind of way uh, I mean I agree like but I also feel like RPGs tend to do well but like, well, I won't say tend to do well, but like a lot of RPGs wind up doing better than you would think they do. Uh, and yet a lot of times like they choose and, and by they, I don't mean Nintendo, I mean all developers tend to choose like an easier option. Like it's incredible to me. There's yet to, as far as I know, be like a big AAA RPG to fail. And so you would think that would inspire a lot of copycats, but I guess the price kind of scares people off. Uh, the smaller, yeah, because I guess you have uh, to invest in like you know building a world. You have to create a story, characters that are memorable. It's yeah. just so much you have to stick into an RPG that I could see why some developers are like, "Eh, we don't want to go through that. Let's just make Mario Golf 16." <laughs> exactly. Like, and then, uh, that's why I was going to say like even a smaller J- or even a smaller RPGs like the JRPGs tend to be uh, more mid tier and budget and small and like or indie tier. Uh, you know, like that double A tier basically like you see a lot of a lot of small but even then even though those games t- do pretty well like fire emblem is doing very well for itself xenoblade is doing very well for itself i imagine xenoblade 3 is going to outpace the sales of xenoblade 2 rather quickly uh i bet by next month xenoblade 3 has some sales where we like damn it sold all of that i i guarantee those reviews were monstrous they were ridiculous. It, it couldn't break that that uh, JRPG barrier, but it, it got as close as possible. I think it's like an eighty nine on Metacritic. That's that's about as good as you're gonna get mm-hmm. for. And then like everything was like not. I just saw so many nines, like a couple of sevens, of course, because it's it's an eighty nine. But like I saw so many nines, people fucking high high praise of that game. And I imagine that like and then the hype behind it was huge. So I imagine that game's gonna sell quite well. And I I mean like if appropriately budgeted. I think Golden Cylinder would do very well, so I, I agree they should bring that franchise back. Uh, Will, what's what's up, man? I've been kind of digging through, as y'all probably have noticed, between in between shots and takes and whatnot, and I was trying to figure out what would I say for the lightning round, but I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to say this for the lightning round. This right here, this, this, this right here for the neighborhood, this for, this, this for the block. Mm. Uh-oh. NFL Street. Mm. I thought for about the games. Games. I, I thought about them. Yeah, NBA, bring the street games in general. Yeah, bring those the back. Street all games up. in general. The bring EA them big. all back. Bring yeah, back bring EA back EA Big. Bring Make back EA Big great again, please. <laughs> Thank you. Please. I need it back, bro. NFL Street was something that just ended up taking over my life at one point when it came out. Like I ended up getting the first game when it came out. I drove to Grenada in GameStop, and I was mm. like, I seen it on the shelf. I'm like. Let me get this real quick and get it. Let's play it. And I enjoyed every second of it. I got more into like the NFL legends. I was like, I'm really loving this type of thing. Cause I already love football as a kid anyways. Right. Why not play something arcadey? Plus I love the blitz games too. Cause there were a couple of those out during this time, but right. this right here just took precedence. And then NFL street two happened in NBA street volume two. Oh my God. Talk about, neighborhoods just getting together at one house just playing the game passing the controller taking turns and just all for bragging rights an amazing time we didn't know we had we we didn't bro we really did (laughs) (laughs) we we had it old as hell (laughs) i'm I'm okay with that i'm 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 okay with it i'm with it 
Hey, this this whole <laughs> yeah. this whole episode is basically just an old timer episode. Oh, back in my day, the PS One and PS Two games, oh, they were so great. <laughs> hey, you got such a good old man voice. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I love the young people. All right, enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> but you know what? I, I want the street games back. Even FIFA Street, I would love to see that come back too. Mm. Give us, give us this old, you know, arcadey kind of urban aesthetic like game. Give me, give us this stuff back because this type of stuff right here. And put something like this with a good online function on it. I'm pretty sure this alongside Madden would probably tear up shelves. Like, by all means, people want NFL Street back. I would love to see it come back. You know, like, in, a, in the case of a lot of these, I kind of know the backstory and the history of, of the shit. So I'm yeah. like, I can kind of I kind of have a good idea of, like, why it hasn't come back. But I was never a big, until, like, very recently, I didn't know shit about sports. So, like, it wasn't, like, until, like, four or five years ago, I didn't know anything about sports. So I have no idea what happened to that franchise. I want to just lay it at the feet of corporate greed, and I'm sure that's a large part of it. But it might yeah. also be some other issues that keep them from bringing that franchise back. Uh, because, I mean, like, it is quite beloved. And, like, mm -hmm. I don't see a reason why you wouldn't have two NFL franchises on the shelves if you could. Like, why not? Even if one sells amazing and one sells all right, you're going to be making money from both. I guarantee it. So, yeah. I don't know. Like, I just the feel like big, EA Big as a whole should just come back. And I feel like... I think the big... Oh, my bad. Uh, but the big problem with that was I think that the third games that came out, they did well enough, but they I guess they didn't hit expectations with the yeah. second iterations of each of those games. I think they just so slowly kind of went like, down, yeah. Yeah, they slowly kind of slid down in sales and, and kind of tanked a little bit in reviews. Yeah. So that was a lot of their problem. Then once that kind of happened, the studio for EA Big shut down and it was just a bunch of mess behind you know, that, and I'm just known for that shutting down studios. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I still hate them for it to this day. Bam. <laughs> yeah, because I think uh, get in there. NBA uh, home court. It that was the last NBA Street game, and I don't think that did that well. Nope, so. it wasn't that great. It wasn't at all. It had some new crazy looking stuff, but it just didn't stick. Yeah, it didn't. EA, I, I, that era was interesting because like that early PS3 360 era, like EA was trying to do different stuff with those franchises, but just couldn't get it to work. Like Def Jam Icon. Yeah, Def Jam Icon. Then, yeah, that that, that game just up. and then that was it. So it was like no more trying bad. for us. <laughs> we're gonna do. We're gonna cheat our way through life. Just release a bunch of like sports games and the occasional first person shooter. It was like those games that almost outlived outlived their their sell by date when they got to the, the PS3 era. Like they were like they they hit their prime on PS2, then PS3 came, and they were the, the like the end of their careers. Either that or they just like didn't put as much effort into the, the latter iteration. That, that was that that early. HD era. That HD era was rough on a lot of developers. That in was the part of it, definitely. So, yeah. I was I was about to say, Keem, I ain't gonna lie. Like what you've done is is kind of validate while these franchises are dead. You're like, yeah, you know, they got to the HD era and they wasn't selling, so they got like, I mean, no, I, I mean, there's other it. stuff to it, yeah, yeah there's definitely course, other stuff course, to of it. Mm. I mean, and also what Terrence said, like, the HD era, the early HD era was hella rough on like so oh, many yeah. developers and so many studios, and it's only now, like, it's only with the PS4 and then kind of now the PS5 generation, uh, PS. PS4, Xbox One, it don't roll off the tongue like PS360. <laughs> exactly. Um, it, really, it really don't. <laughs> but it's only now in the, in the Gen 8 and Gen 9 that they're slowly starting to figure out ways to bring back all those different types of genres. And I would love to see arcade, uh, arcade type sports games and arcade racing games make their own comeback. I'd love, to, I mean, like JRPGs, I mean, I would love to say something about JRP, but the reality is we eating. Like, yeah, Star Wars are. are coming out in like oh, a couple of months. Oh, uh, yes. Valkyrie profile is 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 kind of sort of back. Uh, they they've got multiple HD two D games. They've got like eighty thousand Dragon Quest games coming out. Like the, Dragon, the indie I mean, market like, <laughs> is killing it when it comes to RPGs. Yeah, I sure. I got yeah. some games already on my wish list for for RPGs like I swear, RPG bro. style games. Uh, Quartet and Eight Bit Adventure Two. Some games like on PC that are, that are like getting sequels. Uh, yeah. So they're it's, it's pretty good right now. So that genre yes, is is kind of safe. Uh, I, I think like the big most it, like even the Western RPGs are kind of like as long as you like isometric shit, which I don't, but like they sell well enough so that there's oh, yeah. definitely an audience for them. Like they like those genres are eating good and I would love to see more genres start to like come up. You're starting to see a little bit more platformers like, uh, you know, 
3D and 2D style platform. Well, 2D never went away, but like 3D style platformers, you're starting to see a little bit more of that. And I think that's great. Uh, Cause like the industry, and that's really part of why I wanted to do this episode. Cause I just feel like the industry is better when there's more options available for everybody. Oh yeah. Like I, I just feel like, it, you know, it shouldn't just be, you know, first person shooters and the same four sports games every year. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, a couple of, uh, triple a projects that look exactly identical to one another like or like late ps3 era where the shit was just bad well, not like all the games were bad but like the the variety and the creativity felt like it had been kind of squeezed out that shit was exhausting and I, i'm kind of glad that we're slowly but surely getting back to how it was in the ps1 ps2 eras it, just with you know better graphics and hopefully more inclusive character designs mm. uh all right so we got lightning round uh, who All wants right. to go first on the lightning round? I'll go first. All right, what's up, Rakeem? What you got? Real quick. It's going to be easy. I only got one game for my lightning well, round. I'm, I'm ready for you, Rakeem. Shadow Heart, Shadow Heart, Shadow Heart, Shadow Heart, Shadow Heart. One. Shadow Heart. <laughs> two. Shadow Heart. Hey. Three. Shadow Heart. Hey. Let's go. Hey. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. That, that's where I left to do. Oh, got them all. <laughs> what are we doing in these streets, Konami? <laughs> We got this fire RPG franchise, so unique. Is it? Is it anything I've ever played? Is it Konami is it that has it? Oh, is it Konami who has? It? I, can't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm looking at the box. Was, oh, you're right. It was Midway. Right? Yeah, I'll go say it was. Midway. I'm looking at the box, and yeah, there's it's a reason Midway. why it probably is gone. It's Midway. Yeah, well, well, it was owned by Midway. I thought Konami had the rights to it, but I'd be another company. I know it's like got owned by some company that makes oh, chinkos as well. Actually, well, you. I tell mistake. you what. Keep talking. I'm gonna look it up real quick because you you actually bring Thanks, up a man. good point. Midway. Yeah, it was Midway. Um, yeah, but anyway, the reason I want Shadow Hearts to come back so badly is because when I played Shadow Hearts 2, I didn't end up playing Shadow Hearts 1 first. I played Shadow Hearts 2 Covenant. It was one of the big RPGs in my PS2 like life cycle where I was looking I was looking actively looking for new RPGs and experiences to play. And when I played it, it was such a unique take on RPGs because the setting wasn't like a fantasy environment. And the cast was was really, really different. It had like a, a dark, macabre feel to it while also being lighthearted. Um, it was weird. It was lighthearted and dark. It 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 had uh religious overtones to it. Stop it had here. what's up? I want you to say that word one more time and I want you to get it right. You mean macabre? Macabre? Asco. Macabre. Macabre. <laughs> Macabre. Thank you. I, 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 I didn't stop him, but I didn't even not Cut that shit out. But they shouldn't have put an R on it. Macabre. <laughs> Take the R off. I'll call it what it is. Macabre. Anyway, Macabre. <laughs> <laughs> Too long, man. I'm 30 now. It's in my brain. Hey, hey it's Spy anyway. X family. It's <laughs> go give it to you. You already anyway, know what's happening. It had a, it, a, it had a, uh, not Victorian, but like a darker edge to it. It was set in like a World War, like the end of like World War One setting. There are characters that are based on real life, like Rasputin people, or an Anastasia. Uh, just a really, really cool, unique universe. And what I liked about the game was that it got to the point. It wasn't like a big overworld that you you overlaid on, but each mission, each each area, each level was very unique in its level design. One thing about RPGs now, I've noticed like a lot, you know, a lot, a lot less RPGs is like they can be a little formulaic in how they go approach each level. They can be like kind of linearish in in the dungeons. They're a little more open in the middle, but they can be a little lifeless. With Shadow Hearts, every single dungeon had either a gimmick. Or had something to it that made it interesting. It had you, you had to actually be engaged in what was going on, whether it was like a puzzle you had to solve, or uh, it was it was like uh, leaning into some more story elements. It made each area feel unique. Not only that, the cast was very very crazy and out there. You had a vampire character who could who doubled as a professional wrestler and a superhero, and you had to like do a tournament in a wrestling ring to get him new abilities over time. And he got weapons from just picking stuff up from each area. He would just pick something up. he become his weapon. And that's one character who did all of that. So you can only imagine how varied and crazy this roster was from Shadow Hearts 2. So Shadow Hearts 2 alone made enough of an impression on me. I was like, man, this franchise is freaking incredible. I never got a chance to play Shadow Hearts 3. I did want to, but at the time uh, before I went to college, I gave up my PS2. And that was like a little area where I didn't have a console. And even though I got on PS2 and PS3 back later, I just never went back to it because I was trying to play newer games. But when I found out this franchise was done, I was like, man, that sucks. I would love to play 
a more modern version of Shadow Hearts on another console. Just see that unique kind of aesthetic and, you know, feel to it. Like the last game, I believe, was uh, in New York City. You know, how many RPGs you get in freaking New York City? Or in, like, you know, World War II in where Germany and things like that. 1998. Know, Christmas. Christmas. Not when, where? I think that was in New York. Probably, probably yeah. New probably New York. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. the only, only ones. Yeah, so yeah, I'm like saying, two. like, you're right. Like, that's it's only two <laughs> out of, like, thousands of JRPGs. Oh, okay. You're <laughs> yeah. right. Oh, his brother, I, I didn't know because I never played Parasite Eve, so I have no recompense. For by by the way, uh, yes. the company that owns it is Aruse, Aruse Corporation, which they're uh, now called okay. Universal Entertainment. Universal. And pretty much okay. they're mm -hmm. only known for making, like, pachinko machines. So yeah. I know they made pachinko machines. You're probably machine. never going to get another Shadow yeah, Hearts game. So yeah. I mean, unless I want to gamble. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you want to. I mean, you know they got they actually got license to make machines like here for like Mississippi, Nevada, and New Jersey. That I'm is correct. Eddie. That is correct. That'd be crazy uh, to see people on the streets playing Shadow Hearts gambling. <laughs> Seeing my, demons come up every time you forget. <laughs> my understanding is that the first off, uh, they recently trademarked uh as as you were talking, I went yeah. to look that up and mm -hmm. I, I would have had the information sooner, except I my brain shut down when this man said macabre macabre <laughs> sound like a, a street sound like one of cammy's friends the capri <laughs> macabre you know, like but i've uh, always called him macabre I'm, I'm sorry this man the smartest man one of the smartest people i know he's stay mispronouncing words sometimes i think he do it on purpose so. uh, i don't know what you're talking about aesthetic that, that's what you're talking about uh, so like aesthetic. Thank you, thank you. Uh, in Vinsbury. Actually, I think I think England kind of pronounces it in they Vinsbury. Do. Yeah, okay, there we they go. Do. But I mean, you don't say aluminum either, so like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> never mind, never mind. Look, look, look. So, uh, Universal Entertainment, I believe, trademarked Shadow Hearts earlier this year, like a couple of months ago. And okay. also, uh, the creator of Shadow Hearts, Shadow Hearts uh, Matsuzo Machida, I believe his name yeah. is, uh, uh, yeah. has been talking about working on an IP yep. for months. I mean, for years now. Kind of and like, successor. yeah, so like, I don't know, like, you know, games take four, five, six years now. And he started talking mm -hmm. about this shit three or four years ago. So you never know. You might hear about that shit and it'd be on its way out. Now, is it going to look uh, top tier, triple A type? I doubt it. But yeah. I mean, like, if it looks like, you know, soul hackers yeah. or some shit like that, that's that ought to be good enough for everybody, you know. That's true. So it yeah, looked really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Shadow Hearts two looked really good. The Shadow Hearts one looked a little iffy, and it yeah. got, it, got, it got the curse. Shadow Hearts two at the same very time. Much, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it came yeah, out. It had the curse yeah. coming out like the same time. Final Fantasy ten mm -hmm. for the first one. Ooh, yeah, they yeah. got screwed. Gotta do it. Yeah. They got screwed. Yeah, that was two, two, two came it. out in a good year. I uh, came out. I think the same year as Star Wars and three. That was a good year for me. Well, it was a good year for me. Uh, so yeah, I think Shadow Hearts two. I think even now it still stand up. I hope they bring out like they eventually port them. Some, I mean, I don't know if they ever port them, but I would like to see at least a port to PS4 or something like that so I can play it again because it's been so long. Mm. But yeah, anyway, yeah, that's my choice for my lightning round. All right, Will, what's <laughs> what's up? Give me the lightning round, bro. All right, so for my lightning round here, I got like a couple of them. I got some physical copies of them, man. I showed one of them earlier. Where my wild arms at? God damn it. Mm. Hey, good choice. Good arms. choice. Cool. Another oh, Sony that game that, that you probably, I believe that's Sony. That's Sony. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, I think this is a Sony game. Yeah, because XE published this here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sony holding yeah. a lot of stuff hostage. <laughs> Sony being some flat back bitches. That's what they're doing. <laughs> I told you. I told you what happens. If the shit don't sell well, they'd be like, don't even worry about it. We, we could. Also, my next one up, Artanelico. Mm, Come on now. Okay, okay. My, my, I never got to get into. Okay. Where my next one? Uh, and another one I want to bring up is I want to see... Where in the blue hell is Trauma Center, Atlas? What the fuck are y'all doing? Oh, bro? yo, yo, yo. I actually watched a... I, are you familiar with uh, Nyarly? Nyarly, whatever? Yes, I am. Very yeah, I watched his... Re, I watched a video, actually, I think that was yesterday on the Trauma Center series. So that's just funny to hmm. hear you mention that. But yeah, that's a that's yeah. a good pick. Now, just to give me like a quick little back on that, I played both of those games on the DS. I borrowed them from a good friend of mine, and I love that game so much. I got to the final surgery... And the final surgery, always, always going to be on some hard stuff. I finished that last surgery with no time left on the clock. Mm. It the, the clock ran zero all across. I just knew I failed. But then the nurse came up and said, you did it. You killed it. And I was just like, 
Well, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> hey, look, I had to take, I had to get rid of some new bio weapons. You know what I'm saying? Once they said I got rid of it, I was just too down. I was like, I need more of this in my life. But this shit is cool. I like, I like that. Bring the surgery sim back, Atlas. Dig in the vaults. We love Persona, but let it rest a little bit before you milk it again. God damn it. Give me some trauma center. Yeah, you can't get, even got, get. Got to keep milking the udders. Like, yeah. We can't Man. even get Project Re Fantasy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh. That oh, yeah, you read about that. Since 2017. And you see that shit, man? Even for Arts and Uncle, I got this shit complete, bro. Come on, uh, man. I need, I need it all. I double checked. Uh, it was developed by Media Vision and published by Sony. Mm. And then later yeah. published by XSEED. So, yeah. Uh, Terrence, what's up, man? What, what you got for my lightning round? I got two for the lightning round. Uh, the first one is a game that I, I, I know it's not coming back because it's Konami, but it'd be great if somehow i know it's not coming back because because one is konami and two kojima was a part of it so it ain't happening zone the enders oh, Ooh. Man. oh I, damn. Uh, I i really like there's there's no there's no mech game to this day that hits like this man like this game is just really good in terms of like the what what game would you say kind of meets up with it? Well, I mean, like it's no game like Zone of the Enders. I'll agree with you there. Yeah, it is. In terms of like the action mech style stuff, I guess maybe like the closest oh, is um what was that the Nintendo game that came out uh maybe like last Damon year? Damon X Machina. Yeah, that Crazy. game. That that's yeah. like the closest ah, ah, thing yeah, 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 yeah. that I can think of that's similar to like that action mech style. Now if we're talking like Xenoblade or like games that like feature mechs and you know that's different, but like that act just the action style. There's nothing like it. I, I know it's not it's it's a long shot it's a shot in the dark but I would just love it if Zone the Enders could somehow come back it's like it was the it was a great game back then it had its issues but it was just really yeah. fun to play it was highly replayable it was. because it was so short uh, the story was nonsensical and the characters were weird but you know it's anime right. it is what it is but uh yeah I would just love for Zone the Enders to come back in some kind of way and my last pick um. This one is near dear to me. It's a game that people kind of made fun of of me playing uh, when I was in high school just because it was so Uh weird in comparison to the other stuff that was out at the time. But I had the last laugh because this game actually ended up being really good. Beautiful Joe. Beautiful Joe. I I, I would love for Beautiful Joe to come back. And the thing is, we're in an era now where I I had to get on a list for this. We're having like this resurgence of like the 2D side scroll. I mean, you have stuff like Hollow Knight, you have yep. Bloodstain, you have Celeste, Ooh. you have yep. uh, Ori, Metroid Dread recently came out. People love that. It's like all classic. You could definitely very much Capcom. You could definitely bring this series back and make it in the style of those kind of games, and it could be done well. It doesn't have to be like high budgeted or anything like that. It I think that this game could work well now, just because like the time mechanics, uh, the characters, like. Just just back then, just the, the the whole like pretty much this was just a Power Ranger game back then, and a lot of it people was. didn't get it, but it was. it was just. But I loved it. I loved it too. It was Kamen so Rider much fun. In yeah, that too. Yeah, Common Rider. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, oh yeah. That and also had references to Hollywood and everything. There was just so much going on with the franchise, and I can understand why Capcom kind of left it alone because the sales. I think as the game they put out more games, it just didn't do as well. Like didn't Kamiya leave? Well, yeah, well, yeah, that too. But, yeah, uh, it did happen. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that too. So that's another reason why the franchise is kind of dead right now. But I know that um, they released one, two, then they had like Rumble Roses or whatever it was called. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some yeah, other like spin off games and all ladies wrestling game. Yeah, it. Yeah, well, it was well the view of a gang, the beautiful Joe game was called Roses something. But anyway, like it yeah. it progressively Red, Red did, Rumble, huh? Red Hot Rumble. Yeah, that's what it was. Red Hot Rumble. Yeah, but and then it also had a TV show. Funny enough, but it, it progressively, did. It, did. It, did. it progressively mm-hmm. just didn't do as well as I think Capcom wanted, so they just left it alone. And of course, with the um, with uh, Clover Studios being Clover Works being a uh, no Clover Studios. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of the anime studio, but uh, yeah, with them being <laughs> dissolved, that was a wrap on that. So I can understand why it's dormant, but. It's one of those Capcom IPs that I would love for them to bring back and just do justice to it. Just because, <coughs> excuse me, there's so many games like it in the market right now that there's not a reason to ignore it. It's just like Onimusha. It's like Samurai games are doing well now. There's no reason to not resurrect this IP and do it well in some kind of way. So those are my picks, Zone the Enders and Beautiful Joe. Just two games that I really like I would love to see come back. Well, you know what's what's crazy 
on that ransomware list, they had Onimusha, Dragon's Dogma 2, Power Stone, Captain Commando, <laughs> and like the one franchise you would think would be on that bitch, but was not, was Beautiful Joe. Yeah. That and Okami, but Okami was always kind of like, uh, you know. Okami, was a, Okami like- was a critical darling that I think after, you know, well, after Clover Studios dissolved, that was kind of a wrap on that. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, you would think Beautiful Joe would be something they want to experiment with, but that motherfucker wasn't nowhere on that list. And they had That's so crazy. many games that I'm positive are were like maybe in pre-production that got canceled and they couldn't even bother to do that for Beautiful Joe. So I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. like, how do y'all see this franchise? Because like, I agree with you. Like, that's a cool. That was a really cool, unique franchise from them. Yeah, and, like there it was like the only. Games. Yeah, it was one of the only games at its time that had like slow, like time powers and everything. Like this was before Braid and all these other games that mm-hmm. were experimenting with time. So it was really cool for its time. No pun intended. There aren't that many uh, <laughs> Sentai type <laughs> games like that. That too. There's mm-hmm. Wonderful One Hundred and One, which oh, was yeah. done by mm-hmm. Kami, I believe. So yeah, which, like yeah, that's, I got right that's here. pretty much it. And, like, you would think that they would try to do something, experiment with that franchise a little more, but they just kind of, they like, you know, we made that and we moving on. And, you know, like, I like I know everybody loves Capcom now, but, like, I feel like they, they really could stand to do a little more work. Not in terms yeah. of quality, but just in terms of variety, because it really just oh, feels yeah. like it's Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, Street Fighter, and, and Street Fighter, kind of. Yeah, I mean, they, Street they Fighter just got Street his Fighter. legs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Five just they, got oh, yeah. his legs. So yeah, they finally bringing that back. But really, it's just been Street Fighter. It's just been uh, Monster Hunter and Resident Evil just kind of alternating. And then occasionally they might throw you a bone. They might be like, "Oh yeah, you know, Devil May Cry back. Oh yeah, you know, we about to come out with the new Street Fighter." Like I, I guess, but like compared what to other, Square, what other games, yeah, like Square may not hit the same highs, but like they also taking more shots. And, like, I respect that. I respect the hell out of that. Like, the ability oh, yeah. to be like, oh, yeah, you know, that franchise that you love from back in the day, like, Live yeah. Alive, we going to – they asked for Live Alive. Like, they le- legit – they looked at Studio Asano, looked at that HD 2D style and said, what else can we bring back? And Square, for whatever you can say about Square, and it's a ton of negative shit you can say about you Square, can. but, like, for whatever you want to say about them, they don't let their franchises really just die like that. They got a handful that they let die. Uh, you know, the bouncer, I'm sorry. You know, that shit just a meme. <laughs> the that bouncer too, back. come on, bring it. <laughs> that shit ain't coming You know back. what? Yeah, I should have added that. Yeah, that's my... No, no, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, hell I'm, no, I'm, I'm hell joking, no. I'm joking. <laughs> but like, I'm not serious about the bouncer. <laughs> and I'm like, after oh, this year, I, they I know, might bring it back. Who knows? <laughs> Parasite Eve, of course, that shit was tied mm. up into like some, uh, some rights issues, I believe. But even then, yeah. like they had the same problem with Front Mission and they found a way to bring that back. They was like, we finna remake Front Mission 1 and 2. What's up? Uh... And, and like you see in like Star Ocean and, Par- and uh, not Parasite, uh, Val- Valkyrie Chronicles and all that, and they trying new IPs like Dio Field Chronicles and shit. Like they're actually putting in the effort to at least mm-hmm. make sh- to like try. And no, nah, they're not gonna all hit. I hope Star Ocean hits just for my you sake. You and me both, like, honestly. Like they not gonna all hit, but like even just having some of them and being willing to try, I respect the fuck out of that. Instead of just being like, well, you know, we just gonna make. Kingdom Hearts, Dragon Quest, and Final Fantasy, and then m- maybe nine every now and again we'll throw you a bone, give you a Studio Asano game, and then y'all can get the fuck out of our face. Like they ain't doing that, so I I, I, I love them for that if nothing else. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot to mention uh Tactics Ogre Reborn, which we have practically oh, yeah. seen at this point, and they still haven't told us that it was coming out, even though we know it's coming out in November. Got to that's so weird. That's got to be like a Nintendo Direct or something. They hey, hey, they're, they're gonna, like they're gonna hop on Nintendo Direct and be like, it is available now. <laughs> Actually, you know what they probably gonna do? <laughs> they probably would. We probably we we about do for one um another Sony game. I mean another Sony State of Play or like yeah. what what's the bigger one? PlayStation uh, meeting or whatever. PlayStation Experience it's, or whatever it's called. No, 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 not the, not the show that you went to, but like I think it's called PlayStation Meeting or something like that. Whatever the fuck that shit called. Like the bigger version of State of Play. We about do yeah. for that, and so like it'll probably be there. Like, kind of like last time when they just showed up with a bunch of fucking Square games out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, so, like, the last two franchises I got, Lightning Round, uh, one of them is Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. I love that game. Mm. I-, I was actually torn between that and Lunar. Amalur is, like, another one of those games where I was, like, basically out of video games. Like, I wasn't really playing no games like that. And then I saw Amalur, and, like, I had no interest. Like, I don't care about Todd McFarlane's art. You know, he's he's very talented. And uh, in another podcast, I could tell you why I don't care about him, but I just was never a big fan. Uh, 
and I didn't care about R.A. Salvatore, but like, I don't know, it's sometimes you mix two things that you didn't think would work and it come out with something incredible. And that shit was incredible. The battle scene, I mean, the, the battle system was crazy, like addicting. You felt powerful. You really felt like a badass while you were playing it. It had like this beautiful world that I love to be in, just love to exist in. The, the quest writing left a little something to be desired. Every side quest at the yeah. end of it, every everybody was dead. But can you go find that nigga dead? Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Ain't no sense mm -hmm. in asking me. He did. Uh, but other than that, like, I love that game and I, I hate what happened to it. That shit, that's got to be the best thing a Republican's ever been responsible for in the last 30 years. But like, I'm sorry, it, it is true. But like, you know, of course, he, he mismanaged it. And, uh, you know, the state of what is it? Rhode Island was like, hey, my nigga, like, we want our money. And he was like, I'm gonna get it for you. And I was like, nah, damn, man, we want our money now. And they just took now. the IP. It was such a strange <laughs> thing to do. Like, if you've, if you've never heard of Amalur, Please look up the story. It's one of the strangest, weirdest stories you've ever heard. Like a baseball player literally was just like, what if I just made my own video game? And the, the like the sad thing was he made one, was about to make another. The first one was really good, but just the the state of gaming at the time resulted in it not making enough money. And that shit bankrupted him. It's a sad story. Would be sadder if he wasn't such a prick. But like it's still, you know, like an unfortunate thing. And mm -hmm. like if you loved it. But at least, uh, uh, what's what's the what's my folks' name? Embracer, I think Embracer Studios bought the IP. They uh they did a DLC to Reckoning, and I would love to see like a Reckoning two at some point. But it's been like a yeah. decade. And I think that counts. Uh, and the last game is Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Mm -hmm. Now look, I know we just got one. I don't give a damn. First off, <laughs> that motherfucker was trapped on the Nintendo Switch. It ain't on yeah. shit else. It's not on PlayStation, it's not on Xbox, it's not on PC, it's just on Switch. And I'm like, first off, I didn't know Nintendo gave a shit like that. Like, <laughs> oh, we just gotta have a Marvel game. Like, what? I Nintendo? I, I don't know. Like, And I, that's not shade to Nintendo. Like, whoever paid for it is whoever paid for it, and that's cool with me. I just didn't mm -hmm. think that Nintendo gave a shit about superheroes like that. But, like, I would love to see that franchise, like, properly come back, and, like, you get, like, a Marvel Ultimate Alliance 4... And in like a series, because like, that's really what I wanted from Avengers. Like, you know, I wanted a better budget than what we got with three. But like, I, that's really what I wanted from Avengers. I just want like a theme park ride where you get to play all these different heroes and, and go to all these different locations. And Midnight Suns is kind of that, but it's like so centered on like the mystical part of the Marvel Universe when I would like to do cosmic and street level and all this other shit. And I would love to do all of it. And I would love to have uh, Ultimate Alliance 4 five, six, like however many you want to make, I'm there for them as long as they're good. So like, I, that's the last one that for me, cause I'm like, okay, you know, I, I got to get my superhero shit in. And then quite frankly, even though I prefer DC, they've never really gotten off their ass and done anything other than Batman. So hopefully Wonder Woman's good. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. If you enjoyed it, I need a few things from you. I need you to do us a favor and hit that subscription button on YouTube. I need you to follow us on Twitter and TikTok. I need you to tell your friends about us, and I need you to do me a personal favor and have an excellent week. Peace.